Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video I'm going to be talking about the GE monitors that we have on our unit a little bit more and I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks um, for these monitors that you may not be using every day um, but that would be nice to learn. So in this video I'm going to teach you how to put your monitor in comfort mode. I'm going to show you how to change the lead on your monitor that you're viewing. I'm going to also go over how to change alarms to informational. For example, if your patient's in AFib and they've been in AFib and they're chronic AFib patient, then I'll show you how to change that. I'm going to show you how to calculate things like SVR and PVR, and I'm also going to show you how to view another patient's monitor while you're in another patient's room. So if I'm in room 20, like I am right now, and I want to see what the patient in room 16, my other patient's monitor is looking like, then I'll show you how to pop that up on your monitor. So that's what we'll be going over today. Let's get into the first part. Now I'll go ahead and show you how to change your a little some of the things on your leads. So what you're going to do is go to your rhythm here, you'll click there, and you're going to come over to ECG leads. So you can choose which leads you want to be, see essentially on your monitor by just clicking the down arrow, choosing whichever one you'd like. Obviously certain leads are better for certain things. Um, the recommended leads that you're using are lead 2 and V1. Um, but if you are getting a better snapshot of your patient from another lead, go ahead and go there. If you want to change the size of how it looks on your monitor, then you can come here. So I'm at the max. Um, I can come over here to the one, make it smaller, obviously. And then we can come over to alarms and, or sorry, arrhythmias. And we'll go over to atrial alarms. So a common thing is patients with AFib will come and they've had AFib for a long time. Their, you know, AFib is controlled. So we can go ahead and switch this to informational. So it's not constantly alarming that they're in AFib. And we'll just go from medium to informational. Moving on. Let's say that your patient is going to be passing and you want to switch your monitor to comfort mode. What you'll be doing is you're going to turn off alarms inside the room on this patient. Um, the only alarms that will go off are going to be your you know, deathly rhythms, um, and that will be all at the nurse's station. It will not occur in the room. The only thing that will kind of be an alarm it will not be an audible alarm but you'll see a zero on your heart rate and it'll be flashing red around it um, so if your family members want the screen turned away then we can do that but pretty much that's the only thing we can do we have to keep these monitors on because if we don't keep them on then they're not going to be reading off of the patient so how you're going to do that is you're going to go up here to this top corner where it has the room number, it will have the patient's name. So you'll go ahead and click that. And then you're gonna go to profile and go from adult to comfort. Now when you do that, as you just see, as you've seen, my screen turns completely white. So if my patient's hypotensive, if they're bradycardic, it is not going to alarm in the room. If they're asystole, it is not going to alarm in the room. But rather, if they're asystole, it will alarm at the nurse's station. If they're hypotensive, it won't alarm at the nurse's station. It'll just be those deathly rhythms and asystole, of course. And that is how to switch the patient to comfort mode. Again, you're gonna go to your top right corner. You're gonna go to profile and switch to comfort. We'll switch back to adult. Okay, and close. Okay, so let me show you how to view another patient on this monitor while say you're in this patient's room and you're going to be in here a while and your other patient's on drips or you know you just want to be watching their vitals while you're in here what you're going to do is you're going to go to data and pages here at the bottom 
So I'll go ahead and click that. And then on your screen at the bottom, it's gonna show other patients. So go ahead and click there. And I'm gonna have blur blurred out the patient's names here just for HIPAA purposes, but I'm gonna go ahead and choose the patient that I wanna see. Now, during this time, patients could potentially see what other person's names were and which room they're in. So just make sure that, you know, you're trying to cover this information as much as possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose this person and I'm gonna press view. So now on my screen, I will still be able to see what my patient is doing, but I'll also be able to see what's happening in this other room. And the nice thing is, is all it's going to have is the room number up there. It's not gonna show you your patient's name or anything like that, um, but you can also, while you're here, you can uh, remote silence. From here, you can print uh, your screen, and obviously this is the closed view, so if I didn't want to see this anymore, then I would just press close. So you can keep this up all day. You could keep this up, you know, <clears throat> um, just while you're cleaning up your patient or for whatever period of time you want. Um, and to just get rid of it, of course, you just press close view. So that is how you pop that screen up there. Let me go ahead and touch on real quick um, alarms. So whenever you come in and you're taking you're you're starting your shift, taking care of your patient, a lot of times, you know, maybe during the day or during the evening, they may be decompensated and you know their heart rate or their blood pressure went all out of whack. Sometimes nurses will go ahead and change the alarms so that way you know, it stops alarming as long as we're doing something about it, you know, they're okay with that alarm going. Um, but this can be troublesome because that patient's not always going to, those alarms are for a reason and the patient may not always, you know, be in, you know, AFib, RVR, SVT and their heart rate's elevated. Um, so what you want to do is, first of all, if you change the alarms and the patient gets fixed, then go ahead and change your alarms back. Um, the other thing though, just for safety, like you can always come in on your shift and come over to alarm setup here and you can click there and just press default limits. And what that's going to do is it's going to change all the alarms back to the preset standard ones. This, this same process will happen anytime we discharge a patient it will automatically go back to what your default alarms are. The other thing about alarm setup is you want to make sure that up at your audible and visual, you want to make sure that the volume is set at nine. And again, this is going to be a default setting. It should go anytime your patient is um, discharged, then it will go back to these default alarms. And that's that. All right, y'all, the last thing I wanna go through is the data and pages section on your monitor. So I would click there and this screen would pop up. And what I'm going to go is the calculation section. So the calculation section is handy because it can calculate all of these values for you. Now, some of these values are gonna come directly from your monitor if you have a pulmonary artery catheter in your patient, if you have an arterial line, a CVP setup, et cetera, it will go ahead and take all that information from your screen, sorry. It will go ahead and take all that information from your screen and it'll put it on here. Uh, but you can always edit your input, so I'm going to go ahead and do that since I don't have that information set up on my screen, so I'm gonna edit and I'm just gonna put in whatever. Um, cardiac output we won't get from our monitors, but we'll rather get it from the um, the swan and its connection to the hemisphere. So I'll go ahead and put that in. Let's just say it was five or 5.1. Let's say I had an A-line, it would draw over my A-line mean pressure and we'll just say it was 80. CVP will say it was eight. Mean uh, pulmonary pressure will say it was 15. And then our diastolic here will say it was 10. Now that diastolic pressure, 
on the monitor is going it's going to use the diastolic pressure instead of your wedge but if you did have a wedge pressure you can come here to your pulmonary capillary wedge pressure source and right now i have it to set for the pa diastolic but i could change this to my wedge back um, but since we don't wedge that's why we're going to use just the diastolic pressure since it's pretty equivalent to what your wedge will end up being. So now that I have those values put in, I'm going to come back to view and it's going to have my calculations all set up. So it has, you know, my SVR, my PVR, etc. You can go ahead and save and print and then you can put this in the same section where you put your EKG. Uh, printouts in the patient's chart and you can put this in the critical care flow record in Meditech and that is that. So that was just a quick overview of some things that we have set up through the GE monitor. So I definitely recommend you know using those if they apply to you and hopefully this video helped you out. We'll see you in the next video.